sometimes I have clients that say, well, this one looks louder. Well, it actually might not be because the dynamics available, like these, you know, the difference between the loudest instances and the quieter instances, that's really where things are measurably loud. You can't have quiet without loud and you can't have loud without quiet. And so having something that is, quote, loud throughout the entire track, it might measure really loud, but it's never going to feel as big and dynamic and beautiful as something with real dynamics in it. Right. So even even down to instantaneous dynamics like this or program dynamics, which are really beautiful. Michael, you did a good job with that from the I intro did? to the verses to the choruses to this um, interlude thing to you know to the outro areas other thing to keep in mind too is you know mastering engineers we have never for the most part heard this song before it hits our desk once in a while we'll keep, we'll give it a quick listen and and make sure if the, if the mixing engineer or the artist is worried about something in their mix we'll listen to it and say yeah the bass is fine or no you know there's something up with the vocal can you look at this you know can you look at this level issue or whatever um but for the most part, we are just seeing it for the first time. And that is one of the strengths of the mastering process. And so, again, if you're working on this yourself, hopefully you've taken a couple of weeks off of it, taken a, a little bit of time away and you come back to it and you have a fresh set of ears on it. So the first thing I did was I, I verified the integrity of the file. And Michael, one thing you did, and I was going to wait to wait to smoke you on this is that you sent me a 16 bit mix. Sorry. Yeah. Send me a 24 bit mix next time. Okay. Um, in and fact, even if I'm you're not... doing it, even if you're doing it for yourself, you should, you should bounce it off as 24 bit, 24 correct? bit or higher yeah. because, and the reason is because in a 16 bit mix, you have 96 dB of dynamic range. So the quietest to the loudest, and that's as much impact as you can possibly get. Whereas if you go into 24 bit, you have 144 dB of dynamic range. And that means that your louds can be louder because your softs are softer. I know it sounds super weird and it's kind of like a little bit of a weird way to think about it, but really a 24 bit mix um, or 24 bit wave file will give you um, 16.7 million ways for the computer to describe that one sample. So even though it's 48 kilohertz, um, each, each sample has a whole bunch of information stored in it. So a 24 bit mix will give you 16.7 million ways for the computer to describe it. Whereas a 16 bit file computer only has 65,000 ish ways of describing that one sample. So it's going to come down to the resolution of your reverb sounds. It's going to come down to the air in the vocal. It's going to come down to how cleanly your, you know, your fades are being, um, uh, are, are being expressed, things like that. Um, that is, that's really, really important for you to be submitting 24 bit mixes to your mastering engineers, please, or master it at 24 bit yourself, please. Most distribution services will accept the 24 bit WAV file. There are only a few, um, that are hopefully going to update that sometime soon that will accept only a 16 bit. Mm -hmm. 